It's Take Control Tuesdays. Welcome. I'm nutritionist and maintainable weight loss coach, Trisha Mandis. And on Take Control Tuesdays, you learn how to get educated to take control of your diet, your weight, and your health. Yay! All the things you want, right? So in today's episode, what I'm talking about is why bread, potatoes, and pasta, news alert, are not awful for your health, which is great news because you probably really, really like all three of those foods. Am I right? If you do like those foods, comment below and tell me. Um, so here's why bread, pasta, and potatoes are not the worst thing in the world for you to eat and why you don't really need to be scared of them. Um, first and foremost, before I get into this, always remember that the totality of your diet is way more important than any one food that you eat. So if you are eating candy bars and crap all the time, um, you know, how big of a difference is you adding a potato going to be? Not that much. Um, so just always remember that, okay? Um, so adopting an optimal dietary pattern is the most important thing versus any one individual food. Here are the reasons why bread, pasta, and potato aren't awful for you. So first off, this is basic nutrition science is that your brain and your body's number one fuel is carbohydrate. Boom. And those foods are predominantly carbohydrate, like 90-ish percent carbohydrate, right? So we need energy for our brain, our bodies to function, to go hiking, to go to work, to write, to think. For me to talk to you like this, that is what my body needs. Um, and all carbohydrates are not created equal. Uh, search carbohydrate in this group, in the Nutrition Superstars group, or Trisha Mana's carbohydrate on the internet. And I've done a really good video on carb confusion um, because a carb is not a carb is not a carb. But however, um, when you do eat foods that predominantly do have carbohydrate in them, your body breaks that down and uses that as fuel. Okay, so you need that. It's a very important thing to have. Um, potatoes. Potatoes, one of the wonderful things about potatoes is they're filling and they're satiating. And why is that so important? Why is it important that you feel full and satisfied when you eat? What do you stop doing when you're full and satisfied? You stop eating. Oh my God, amazing. Yes. <laughs> so they're very filling. They're sustaining. Like we don't have to worry about a famine in any way in this country for now knock on wood. Um, but if we did, I would 100% be stocked with friggin' potatoes in my house because they give you enough energy to survive and to live, right? Like I'm not going to want to live off of kale and Brussels sprouts. I would, I would feel awful. And the problem is, is what people are putting on top of the potatoes or on top of the pasta or on top of the bread and the other things that they're eating all day long. So when I eat a potato, that is only, what is it, 345 calories per pound, where cheese is 1,834 calories per pound. I'm not putting cheese and butter and oil and cream and sour cream on top of it. I'm putting ketchup or salsa or hummus or other whole plant foods on top of it um, to make sure that it's not driving the calorie density up, okay? Um, potatoes contain over 12 different vitamins and minerals. They're full of fiber. They have all the essential amino acids. So they're very health promoting. And then if you eat them as part of an optimal dietary pattern, in, our, in my private client group, we say potatoes equal more sex. And the reason being is because um, they can help accelerate weight loss when you know what you're doing with the rest of your diet really well because of how filling they are. As long as you're not putting, um, the most calorie dense foods on top or um, disease promoting foods on top. So they're also low in calories, like I just said, which is great and filling and satisfying. The other thing that's cool about potatoes is they don't have disease promoting um, elements in them. So they do not contain saturated fat or cholesterol, both of which are non-essential nutrients, which means you do not need to eat them in order to survive. That's part of what clogs up your arteries and contributes to stroke, heart attack, um, even cancer, different things. So just make sure you're not topping your potato with that. And with bread and pasta, they're slightly more calorie dense, but it's the same thing. Like when it comes to those foods, when you look at the world where <clears throat> potatoes are eaten the most, like in Peru, it is their staple food. 
they're not as overweight as we are in this country. They have a lower rate of heart disease um, and they are eating a lot of friggin' potatoes. Um, same thing with bread and pasta for the most part. Um, but with bread and pasta, what's most important is that you just make it 100% whole, 100% whole grain, which means that when you're eating it, you're getting all of the nutrition that that grain originally had. Let me show you. So <clears throat> if you imagine this is wheat and it is, it does represent wheat, there's three parts to a whole grain. You have the bran, which is the outside, the fiber, the endosperm, which is predominantly carbohydrate. And then on the inside, this is called the germ, which has B vitamins. So when you are eating whole grain pasta, 100% whole grain pasta, 100% whole grain bread, you're eating all of these parts. So you're getting all the nutrition. It's going to help fill you up more when you feel full, you stop eating. Okay. But what happens is most of us are eating bread and pasta that's only made out of the endosperm. So you're not getting the fiber. It's not as filling. You're going to eat more because the fiber has been removed. Like you can't outsmart willpower out your stomach in that regard. So when you do eat those foods, just make sure that they're 100% whole, so you're actually getting some freaking nutrition from them when you do eat them. And then the same thing, you're not topping them with butter and cheese and sour cream and meat and all this stuff. That's what gets you into trouble. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please post them. And now I would love to hear from you. Please answer today's Take Control Now question and answer in the comments below. Are you scared of eating these foods and why? Are you, or at one point were you, and maybe you eat optimally now and you're not anymore. Um, for some of my clients, it's definitely like a little bit of a shift that they're like, I've been told not to eat these foods for so long. I feel like really bad about doing it, but then they see the scale go down and that helps uh, alleviate that concern. And plus these foods taste really good, right? And you most likely really like them. So I would love to hear from you answer today's take control now question. Are you or were you ever scared of eating these foods and why? And if you have anything else to say, as always, I would love to hear.